should go easy on the cola, mate. Eh? I don't see any restrooms for the next 10 miles. Ouch! You know, if it were a decade ago, I could have sued you for violence against the robot kind. Hey, wait, 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 wait. No more zaps. I'm zipping it up. How many years has it been? We need to leave the city. I'm home, Mom! Hi, honey. Have you ever wondered if the distance between two points on Earth remains the same for us humans over time? If some place was thousands of miles away for us a century or two ago, is the distance still the same even today? Or has it been shrinking over time? Well, here is an interesting thought. Imagine a sheet of fabric with two stones that are placed diagonally across each other. Now. Imagine a force pressing the center of the fabric downward slowly. As a result of this depression, the two stones, which were five meters away at one point, keep coming closer to each other as time passes. This exact thing has been happening to our world for the past two centuries. The gap has been decreasing with time. Back then, it used to take us months to cross the Pacific, but now it's just a few hours away. In those days, people used to write letters. This lengthy process of writing and delivering the letter to our loved ones was cut short by a Scottish inventor named Alexander Graham Bell. He invented telephones. Delivering messages just became a heck lot faster. And with this, the sheet of fabric bent a little more and the stones were closer than before. And who knows, they might have stayed that way if mankind did not invent the internet. This forest, called the internet, bent the fabric like never before. The pivoting element that steered us in this direction was a mesh of networks called the World Wide Web, invented by a visionary man, Tim Berners-Lee. May, are you still in your school uniform? Not now, Mom. I'm watching Time Warp. I want you off that sofa right now. Aunt Lena will be here any minute. Oh, God! Don't stay late. You have an early day tomorrow. I know. Sweet dreams, honey. You sure this thing ain't broken, Elfie? Of course. What curled up your back? Anyway, what's that box you're holding? It's one of the lost technologies that the Elf Faction has been working on. We call it a cell phone. I can play games on it, take pictures or record videos, but my favorite of all is the internet. What kind of magic is this? Magic is so ancient now. Science is the new trend in our faction. But how does this internet thing help me? In lots of ways, like Say you want to look up a word's meaning. All you have to do is type the word here. And hit the search button. Just two simple steps to get the meaning of any word. That's it? Mm-hmm. Are you saying this ain't witchcraft? So, you want to know more about this? If the Dwarf Lord didn't ask me to learn from you elves, I would never listen to your crap. Yeah, yeah, whatever. 
Anyway, let's start. So, this screen you see here, we call it a web page. You can think of it as a medium to display information on the internet. Like this web page here has information about the word human. And if we combine web pages with the same kind of information, we've got a website. Hold on. What do you mean, combine? Well, let's say I search for the meaning of one more word. Now, this is another web page, which also has a word's meaning in it. Yeah? So, stand alone, we call these two as web pages. But, as both the web pages tell us about the meaning of words, we can combine them together and call it a dictionary website. You mean to say a website is made up of multiple web pages? Exactly! A web page has various sections in it. Whoa! That's too many, Elfie. Don't worry, we're gonna go one by one. So, this name you see here, it's the title of this web page. Oh, I can name my web page? Mm hmm. And whatever name you choose, it appears in the title section. Next, we have this top section of the page that's called the header. It has the logo of the website and options to open different web pages related to this website. Each one of them is called a menu. You mean clicking on it opens a different web page, right? Yeah. Clicking on any menu opens a new web page. Moving on, this huge section of the page is called its body. Most of the information is present in this part of the page. And what's this here? That's a button. Clicking on it makes the web page perform some action. Ah, uh, that's why. Every time you had to search a meaning, you clicked on it. Exactly, because clicking on it tells the web page to search the meaning of the word I typed here. <laughs> Not some rocket science, I see. <laughs> True. And yet, it's we elves that invented it. Anyway, this bottom section of the page is called footer. Stop with the names already, man. Just want to know how to make a web page. That's it. Oh, that? So, we need at least three tools to make a web page or a website. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's start with HTML. It'll help us make the various parts of a web page. Similarly, CSS helps give us some sort of design to all these parts. What? Okay, let's take a look at the header here. You see how it's got a black background color? Mm-hmm. It's how the creator of this web page designed it to be. A CSS helps us do all this designing? Exactly! The last one is JavaScript. It helps us add interactions to our web page. So to understand better, let's hit the search button. You see what happened? Well, yeah. Some kind of loader and a loading message appeared. And this change happened because of a JavaScript program. So this program made the web page show me a loader when I clicked on the search button. Exactly! Which means it allowed us to interact with the web page. Yeah, got it. Perfect! Now let's make a sample web page. Here is a small HTML program. The words written inside the brackets are called HTML tags, or simply tags. A tag that starts with a letter is called an opening tag. Let me guess. The tags starting with a slash are called closing tags. Bingo! So the first tag we've got here is the opening HTML tag. This tells the computer that what we've written here is an HTML program. The most important tag, eh? 
you can say that. Similarly, with the closing HTML tag, we let the computer know that we've completed the program. Next, we've got the head tag. Inside it, we do mention the title. Whatever name you want for your web page, you mention it between the opening and closing title tags. Now we've got the body tag. It helps us make the body of the web page. And like I told you before, we'll be programming most of our web page inside the body. Yeah, I remember. Now let's see what kind of web page this program will make. I see the title is First Web Page. Yep. But the entire page is empty. Well, yeah. We didn't exactly program anything inside the body. What are you waiting for then? Tell me something I can write there. <laughs> sure. So let me tell you about some heading tags. They'll help us add some text to the web page. Like, say, I want to add my name to the page. This is what I'll do. Here, H1 is one of the heading tags. With this, Elfie will appear on the web page? Absolutely. See, there's my name. Similarly, we've other heading tags like H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. So basically, the size of text keeps on decreasing as we go from H1 to H6 tag. Exactly. I guess we can wrap it up for now. I agree. Any more than this and I'm running out of here. <laughs>